Hi there. I started down this path in order to learn how to help heal my daughter from histamine intolerance and mast cell activation syndrome. I've done a couple of videos about our story, but today's video is going to be a bit more practical. I'm going to share some fundamentals about a low histamine diet, as well as some tips and tricks to make your life easier. There are plenty of dietitians and experts with their lists of meals and foods, and I just want to be transparent that I am not an expert. I'm just someone who had to learn through experience, and I want to help others in the same position to make their lives a little bit easier. Why would I want to do a low histamine diet, you're asking? Well, the answer is I don't think anyone wants to do this for funsies, because spoiler alert, it's a lot of work and very limited. However, if you found this video because you're searching out information about low histamine diets, then you probably have identified a few trigger foods or harmful symptoms that you believe might be tied to histamine and you're trying it out. Diet is one of the best first steps to shifting your body to neutral. Usually, if histamine intolerance catches your intention, it's because things are very not right at the moment, and it's an obvious solution that needs to be tried. Eliminating high histamine foods allows your body to process the histamine it's creating as a byproduct of your immune or stress response and to come back to neutral. That's why diet is not the solution long term, because you also need to understand and heal what's causing such an excessive histamine release, either from your immune or stress response, so that you aren't continuing to make excess histamine and can resume eating normal foods again. Within a few days, we saw relief for our daughter, and it was clear that that was the right path for her. However, having a one-year-old with histamine intolerance was tough because of all the baby-led weaning and prepared baby foods, all of them had high histamine ingredients in them. So before I get into the tips and tricks section today, I just wanted to outline a few basics as a foundation in case you're completely new to low histamine diets. First, it's important to note that some foods are naturally higher in histamine than others but can also collect an increase in histamine over time that they are in a refrigerator, especially such as meats or processed foods like ground meats. There are a ton of lists out there, and it's overwhelming because the information is very conflicting and leaves very limited options for your diet. One app that is highly recommended in Facebook groups is called the Histamine Intolerance app. It has a strawberry icon. I'll show it on the screen here. It allows you to search for specific foods and get the information if they are high histamine or a histamine liberator. I personally don't use it, so I can't speak from experience, but a lot of people appreciate easy, quick access to double check when they're out shopping or making a meal. Histamine levels can vary by preparation method. For example, chickpeas are listed as a no-go on many lists, but we just take the dried chickpeas, soak them overnight, and prep them first thing in the morning, and it works well for our family. Most people who try to do a low histamine diet will do dairy-free, gluten-free, and focus on low histamine fruits and vegetables. I will note that we did use lactate successfully for my daughter once she was weaned from breast milk. I know this is a lot of information to take in, but just remember one step at a time and do the best you can each day in creating new habits and making better choices in reclaiming your power and your wellness. Okay, I think those are enough of the basic foundational components. Today, I'm going to share with you five tips when it comes to a low histamine diet. Tip number one, choose quality. Buy organic as much as possible for your low histamine fruits and veggies. Grass-fed beef and organic free-range chicken are keys to our diet around here, because if one is sensitive to something like GMO corn, you can still react to the food that your food is eating, especially when you're working to heal things and trying to free yourself from a flare. You want to minimize any variables and have good quality foods with as little additives and hormones and pesticides as possible. Finding a local butcher or farm to work with that you can get to know their feed practices and butchering standards would be amazing. That being said, sometimes if you go local, it can get really expensive. It's all a difficult trade-off, and you do the best you can with what you have. That being said, even the best quality foods, especially meats, increase in histamine levels while sitting in the fridge, either at home or at the grocery store. 
Our goal is to freeze as soon as possible or cook and then freeze in portion sizes. We like doing the prep up front as this makes it easier to pull a meal together without having to cook from frozen raw all the time, especially for small toddler sized portions. For those who are okay with cooking from raw, a very popular tool and one of our favorite kitchen gadgets is the Instant Pot. There are a lot of ways that you can make some incredible low histamine meals and even cook from frozen to minimize histamine levels. Another tip is that you should avoid eating leftovers more than 24 hours old. We actually just freeze any of my daughter's leftovers right away and we don't let any of them sit in the fridge. Tip number two, work smarter, not harder. Making major changes like this can feel very restrictive. We're lucky that we have a massive freezer, so food prep has been essential for us to survive strict diet conditions and to have some easy hacks. Frozen vegetables have been helpful as they are usually flash frozen quite quickly and it's easy to portion out what you need. When I buy organic produce, I have found that grapes, melon, and cucumbers are our favorites that come back to life quite well after the freezer with just a little bit of warm water. Now remember, everyone is different because cantaloupe, as an example, can be a histamine liberator for some, but my daughter does quite well with it. Really, it's about listening to your body. Another key to prepping is making things for her in bulk in order to have it on hand in the freezer. Some of our favorite things I prepare in bulk would be gluten-free oatmeal pancakes or muffins for breakfast. I've adapted those to be egg-free because my daughter is allergic, but it's really handy first thing in the morning to be able to take a frozen pancake out of the freezer, warm it up, and have a nice healthy option first thing in the morning. We've also been doing overnight oats, and that's been quite successful as well. Chickpea nuggets are another great source of protein, and they freeze and thaw really well. We've also done sauces like the no tomato sauce and a special type of hummus using low histamine veggies. We also do gluten-free breads and muffins, and honestly, the freezer is my best friend. Recently, I found a really awesome recipe for a lentil patty and had a lot of fun prepping and making those, and my husband really enjoyed them as well. But honestly, I started with just the basics, and the more that I got comfortable with low histamine ingredients and gluten-free cooking processes, I was able to try more and more recipes. So keep it simple at the beginning. Don't overwhelm yourself. Tip number three, minimize your toxin load. Part of the load on your body that could be triggering the stress response within you are the toxins and chemicals that you consume. That could either be through eating or through your skin, like with all of your detergents. That's why I recommend organic for vegetables because they use less harmful products to protect the crops. While organic can be expensive, if budgets are tight, at the very least, look up the dirty dozen vegetables to see who are the worst pesticide offenders and do organic just for those options. EWG.org is a great resource for researching those as well as any other products you use. This also includes dishwashing soap and detergents. What can go on your plates or your clothes can also go into your body. Speaking of toxins hidden in our food, I want to be sure you're aware of one specific herbicide that's actually found quite commonly in food production, glyphosate, which is also known as Roundup, which is produced by Bayer Monsanto. Many people that do a low histamine diet also do gluten-free, However, just because something is gluten-free doesn't mean that it's good for you. In the beginning, I was excited that I could still give my daughter some semblance of a normal childhood by letting her have Cheerios since they are gluten-free and otherwise should be low histamine. Luckily, at some point in the last year, glyphosate was put on my radar, and in doing my research, I found out that the two highest levels of glyphosate in General Mills cereals marketed to children were found in Honey Nut Cheerios Medley Crunch with 833 parts per billion and Cheerios with 729 parts per billion. The EWG Children's Health Benchmark is 160 parts per billion. Yeah, you can imagine exactly how fast that crap went right into the trash. I mean, seriously, a known cancer-causing agent at that level in a cereal commonly given to children. <sighs> it's so disgusting. But 
On a lighter note, we are massive fans of One Degree Organic Foods, and they have some really great options that our family loves. Check these out. We also use their oats because they are committed to being glyphosate free. Also, you can even trace the source of your products via their website. Tip number four, data is key. Reactions can be difficult to pinpoint because it's not a normal allergic reaction. You might think you or your kid is okay eating banana, strawberry, avocado, or some other high histamine food because they don't react to it. It's not like they're allergic, but that's because we have a bucket of how much histamine our body can process. And maybe early in the day after fasting all night, it's lower, but by the end of the day, they're in a flare or you're in a flare. That's why a food and reaction diary is key to figuring out your unique trigger foods and by going very simple, low histamine diet to reset and heal. I highly recommend working with a functional medicine or holistic doctor to work towards healing those root causes. Any healing teammate will be greatly appreciative of having access to this data lined up with any reactions to help troubleshoot so that you can find if you have other sensitivities. It's common for people who do low histamine diets to develop sensitivities to other types of foods because we're consuming far less high histamine foods. For example, in our house, we developed a salicylic sensitivity that needed to be resolved too. Yeah, there's more than just histamine, but I won't overwhelm you today. And the last tip related to low histamine diet is stress management. Everything we talked about could be completely irrelevant if you're constantly flushing your body with stress hormones and therefore histamine. I'll be doing a lot of videos on this topic coming up, but in the meantime, check out this video. Dishwashing. <laughs> they go dairy feet, dairy free, as they are usually bad. <laughs> Some of our favorite things that I pat. <laughs>